What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about multiple different ways that you can create windows inside of your SketchUp models. Um, some of these are extensions and if you're looking for more great SketchUp extensions and information on those extensions make sure you check out my free SketchUp extensions guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right so what I wanted to talk about in this video is is I wanted to talk about ways that you can create windows inside of your models. And I will know in this video, I'm gonna focus specifically on ways that you can create the window geometry itself. Um, I will link to a video below about actually cutting holes in objects. I don't wanna to go too far down that particular rabbit hole because I don't want this video to get super long. Instead, I wanna talk about just ways that you can actually create window geometry, assuming that you have a way to cut these holes. So we're probably assuming that in this case, we're just gonna cut the hole holes by drawing them and then push pulling them or something like that. So probably the first way and the way that a lot of people uh, spend time creating um, windows in their models is by actually modeling it manually. So just by coming in here and just kind of modeling out this frame, something like this, maybe taking one of these and offsetting it in, something like that. And then maybe you could use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a couple different copies. And then you could just kind of push pull this out into your opening. So something like this, you could, you could just come in here and model this manually. Um, a lot of people do this. And uh, there's, a, there's a few different ways to actually do this, but um, if you wanted to do this this way, you definitely could. The problem with this is this is super time consuming. And honestly, it's just kind of a pain because you have to come in here and you have to create all this extra geometry and all this other stuff. There may be a slightly faster workflow than what I just did. There's probably a slightly better way to do that. But overall, you're just creating a lot of geometry and now you could definitely come in here and you could add like a glass material and do this this way so if you wanted to model a window like that you can do that you can model these things manually however there's a lot of faster ways to do this and so to start off um, we're gonna start by just talking about downloading windows from the 3d warehouse so if you wanted to you could definitely go into the 3d warehouse and you could just do a search for windows like this and usually I sort by popularity and there's a lot of windows in here that you can download. Like for example, there's these windows by Acorn. There's a lot of windows in here by SketchUp, things like that. So if I click on this, you can see how this gives me a window. It's 102 inches by 64 inches. So I could download that and bring that into my model and place this right here. So the problem with this though, is this window and we don't have it set up to cut holes or anything like that. This window isn't very customizable, meaning I can download this at this this set of dimensions, but if I come in here and try to use like the scale tool or something like that to resize it, you can see how you could resize it, but if I wanted to try to fit that into this opening, um, it wouldn't really work super well because you would have to go in here and you would have to manually change all of this geometry. Otherwise you'd get distortions and things like that. So unless there's a window in here that's really close um, to what you want inside of your SketchUp model, I would not necessarily recommend just downloading a random window from the 3D warehouse, though you could download the window and then create the hole in your face manually. So if you wanted to do that, you could come in here and you could cut that hole that way if you really wanted to. But that's not necessarily going to be ideal. So the next way of downloading models from the 3D Warehouse is a little bit better. You can actually go look for dynamic components. And so what you would do is instead of searching for just a window, you would look for a dynamic window. And so a dynamic window is a window that's set up so that you can edit it and so that you can adjust it. And so I would probably again sort by popularity in here. But like for example, if you were to look at this scalable double window right here from SketchUp, you can see how this says that you can interact with the window in order to open and close it, um, but it's also scalable. And so what scalable means is this window is set up where if you bring it into your model, 
and you adjust it, so if I place it in the hole like this, then I activate the scale tool, you can see how instead of getting all of those different scale points that you usually get, you can see how this window is specifically set up where you can only scale it along the red, along the red and green axes. And so what that means is you can actually scale this in order to make it fit in your opening. And if you watch when I click here, it's going to resize um, to actually fit inside of this opening. And so a lot of windows like this, if you right click on them and go down to dynamic components, there's actually options you can adjust of different things that you can do in here. So I could adjust if this has a grill inside of it, I could adjust the material. These things are editable based on the way that this has been set up. And so this one in particular, came from SketchUp and so you know it's probably been set up with pretty good practices and things like that. So if you're looking for windows that you can quickly scale and fit inside of an opening you can look for dynamic components inside the 3D warehouse. So now let's talk a little bit about extensions. So let's say that we don't necessarily want to download a model from the 3D warehouse, let's say that we want to create our own window. So there's a lot of different tools that you can download in order to do that. And the first one is a simple tool from SketchUp called the Window Tool. And the Window Tool, when it's been installed, and I will link to all of these extensions in the notes down below, the Window Tool allows you to add a window with a size that you can set. So you can set your width, and your height and then you can also set if it's a double hung or if it's a slider. So if it's a double hung and I hit OK, you can see how that's going to create a window that's going to be exactly that size. And so this is a fairly simple tool. So let's say I had another opening over here. Like this, you also have the option to create a slider window. So same size, I could go ahead and click on this face or maybe on the back side here. So you could also use this tool in order to create a slider window. Um, this is a fairly limited tool. Um, it doesn't even actually create a face in here with glass in it, but it does create all of these faces in here, which are really what take a lot of time when you're creating windows inside of your models. So if you're looking for just a quick way to create a window, this is a good way to do that. So in addition to that, there's another extension in the 3D warehouse called the three point window tool. What the three point window tool does is it allows you to set your depth of your window and a whole bunch of different other things as well. Like if it's a fixed or an openable window, um, different gaps and different sash things, it gives you more things that you can edit. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set our frame depth to six inches because that's how thick our wall is. Uh, I think we're gonna leave everything else kind of the way it is, but this tool allows you to set that window based on three points inside of your model. So you can see how I was able to drop this in really quickly um, using that tool. So it's a very simple tool. It doesn't have a whole lot of different options or anything like that. but it does let you add a window really quickly. So let's say for example that I wanted this to be an openable window instead. We'll set our glass inset to something a little different, maybe like three inches and click OK. But you can see how you can use these different tools in order to create this window really quickly. So if you wanna create just a really quick window based on points inside your model, you can do this as well. And so now we're going to start getting into some more complex tools. So the first one is a tool that I use a lot when I'm creating things like curtain walls and things like that. It works a little different than most of these extensions and that's an extension called Lattice Maker. And so what Lattice Maker does is Lattice Maker actually takes faces um, and creates a lattice out of them. So like for example if I was to just draw a face like this one, what Lattice Maker will do is that'll offset whatever face you have selected by a certain thickness and uh, it'll let you create a glass pane like this. So you can see how this one actually takes the face that you have selected and it breaks it up or it creates a window based on that. So like for example with this one you could come in here and if you were to split that up so if I was to divide that by four with my copy here if I was to do the same thing right here and then select this, this would take every one of those faces 
and create a lattice out of it. So it would offset it in. Um, the limitation on this one is you can see how all this does is it takes each one of these individual faces and offsets and, and push pulls it. And that means that your um, that means that your mullions on the inside are thicker than the ones on the perimeter. So you lose a little bit of uh, believability on that and uh, realism, but it's also really good for really complex faces. So let's say, for example, that we had a curved face. So let's say I had a curve like this one, and we'll just push pull this up. But let's say I had a curved face just like this. And if you look at your hidden geometry, that's made up of individual faces like these. Well, if you were to take this line at the bottom and use the move tool in copy mode and then divide this up into a number of different faces, then you could come in here with Lattice Maker and run the tool. You could set your pane material to a glass material again, um, and you could set all your widths and depths and everything and just click OK. And what that would do is that would come in here and that would create a lattice of windows. Um, that would create a lattice of windows based on that geometry. So you can see how you can create a really complex face really quickly. You could also come in here with your lattice, maybe make your width and your depth maybe a little more narrow. So maybe like an inch and an inch and then do the same thing. So you can adjust the style um, based on the sizing of that lattice and the sizing of the mullions and things like that. So that one's good for kind of fixed kind of windows and things like that. And so now I wanna take a look at an extension that allows you to create a lot of these windows in a much more customizable way. And that extension is gonna be called Instant Door and Window. And that's gonna be from Valley Architects. I will link to a full tutorial in this in notes down below. But what I really wanna note about this one is the number of styles of windows that are available. So all of these styles you can bring in to your models really easily and they're all 100% editable. Meaning that uh, I can go through and I can adjust the parameters on these to basically whatever I want. So I can adjust the way this is divided, I can adjust the way that all of these different window pieces are stacked. There's just a ton of different options in here. So you can set like the overall window type, the tops and bottoms. Like this is probably the most customizable window extension that I've tried. And so you can see how I can take this and I can bring this window in really easily. And you can bring it in on those faces as well, but you can see how this just gives you This gives you a lot more options of different things that you can do. So you can go with a completely different style, like a slider or um, all of these different windows. So if you're looking for a lot of different windows in here, or if you're looking for a lot of different window options that are really customizable, you may wanna check out Instant Door and Window because um, this really gives you the most customizable options of anything that I've seen. So Instant Door and Window is a great extension for the customizability. And then the other extension I want to talk about is Flex Tools. So Flex Tools is an extension that allows you to generate your own dynamic components. So if I look at Flex Tools, what this has is this has a whole bunch of different dynamic windows that you can bring into your model. So I can take this window, I can bring this into my model, and then everything about this is editable. So if I right click on this and I go into my component options and attributes, you can see how you can adjust this really quickly. So let's say I want this to be 60 inches wide. I can adjust that in here. I can set the wall thickness. I can set the uh, all the different sash sizes and everything else. And I can click apply and you can see how that's going to adjust in here. So if you wanted this to be a 60 inch by 60 inch window, you can just come in here and make that adjustment really easily. So, and there's multiple different options of different kinds of windows in here. So I could also take this window so I could take this window and I could drop this in and it's gonna have the same number of options and attributes and things like that. And so the nice thing about these being dynamic is not only um, can I go in and adjust those that way, I can also use the scale tool. And you can see how when I scale this out, this is automatically going to adjust. So it's not distorting the size of like the interior divider pieces or anything like that, those automatically resize based on how you scale this. So you can scale this however you want and you can see how those go back in and adjust. And if you wanted to, you could come in here and
set the number of horizontal and vertical divisions. So if you wanted this to have like four divisions or something like that, you can see how you can make that change really quickly. So um, these are both excellent extensions. Um, if you do a lot of adjusting and changing of sizes, I would probably recommend Flex Tools. If you're looking for more variety in the kinds of windows that you can create and you're okay with having to do a little bit more editing and planning ahead on the size of your windows, then you could give um, instant door and window a try as well. But they're both excellent extensions and they're both great at different things. So that got a little bit long, but I hope I gave you some great uh, ideas on ways that you can create windows quickly and easily inside of your SketchUp models. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. How are you creating your windows inside of SketchUp? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.